All right, Herbie, we are ready to roll. And you're doing double duty tonight, repping in the first game, and then a uh, quick shower or a snack, and uh, up here in the booth with me for the second game. Great to have you on board. I'm not sure when the last time we called a game together was. Oh, thanks, Snapper, for having me here. I think the last time we were together was at the uh, Junior International Games in Messina, maybe? Uh, yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, the uh, World yeah. Juniors. Or World, yeah, U15, 17s. Yeah. yeah, prior to COVID, I believe. Uh, yeah. Well, it was. Or was it the COVID? It was kind of. I don't know. I got COVID there. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. so I think it was during COVID. Yeah, well, but, I'm uh, glad we're all over that. And yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good to be back. Uh, pretty fast paced game that first game. And I'll tell you what. Fresh off the couch, Stamper. Get out there and ref this. Uh, you get to try and keep up with the Jim Thorpe All-Americans yeah, and the Syracuse was, Spark. Yeah, that was a really uh, good fast-paced game there. When yeah, some fun lacrosse going on. So what has happened? I think everyone's kind of wondering what happened. The PBLA obviously launched in December and uh, about five weeks in. Just was untenable. There was, uh, you know, some things happened and just couldn't continue the way, the way it was. So uh, obviously everyone disappointed that that happened. But... The uh, you know the, the some of the founders have, have given their approval for things to continue, and uh, the players, coaches, and Mammoth Sports and Entertainment have come together to make this happen. We'll talk a bit more about these tournaments that we are watching, but right now we have the Binghamton Ren Bombers with the first possession of the game, and that is Voigt passing it down low, skip pass across, and a hard sidearm rip there from Jake McNabb, or number 77. He's got the Donnie Moss jersey on, but that is Jake McNabb. Renegades move up into the offensive zone, whipping it up is Jeff Geddes. The wheels on him are a primary focus of his game. Here's Bradley Voigt, the pass across, big first save by Kobe Johnson. Yeah, Kobe's best friends backed him up on, the, on that save there, Stepper. There's a save by Davy Jones at the other end. We have seen now both of our starting goalies. Herbie, you want to just run through the rest for this game? Yeah, uh, crew chief, we have uh, Danny Tavares and Clint Doolittle and John Sibick. Whole new flavor of referees coming in to help this uh, PBL program. So it is called the uh, Players Box Lacrosse and new refs, new jerseys for the refs with the uh, fuchsia and white stripes. Yeah. We've decided it's fuchsia. I think it's fuchsia. Shout out to 6N Sporting Material for supplying these uh, very, they're very comfortable stampers. Yeah. They're, they're really comfortable. 6 sportswear. sports wear. Look them up. I thought they might be a bit hot because you were sweating a lot. Right? <laughs> I told you. I'm fresh <laughs> off the couch. Here's a drive to the net. Nice reverse there. And the finish. First goal of the game goes to Binghamton. And that is a beauty, I believe. Kilcoin. Was that Cody Kilcoin putting that one in? Nice finish. Just going across the crease and going back against the green. You know, last time I seen Cody Kilcoin was he when he played for the Aquazesne Indians and uh, they won the Junior B Founders Cup. And uh, the kid still looks like he's been playing all these years. Yeah. Yeah. Good to see. There's the nice behind the back pass. And the funny thing you see, the pair of defenders both just kind of froze. It was like they didn't, neither of them really knew where they wanted to go. Uh, and that, you know, these guys haven't played for a few weeks now. A little, uh, we saw a little rust in the first game. I thought it fell off pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, was, sure. yeah, Between the Jim Thorpe All-Americans and Syracuse Spark in the first game. Syracuse, who you might remember with the vibrant orange uniforms. A little slip there for Whitlow, but he will reverse course and get the pass off and a shot coming. But they uh, had the black on tonight. A little, uh, still pretty sharp, a little less um, jarring on the eyes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Matt Bennett into the offensive zone. That pass gets away from Voigt. That is James Voigt, the older brother of Brad Voigt. So he was saying the uh, it's there's family bragging rights on the line tonight. And his grandmother, their grandmother, told him they're not allowed to fight. <laughs> Let's play lacrosse, right? Yeah. So if you see them, oh, what a rip, McNabb from the outside. That is just a laser high to high. Not much fancy or deceptive, just perfect placement. Well, he got open, his hands were free. There was a defender probably five yards away from him. You gotta take that shot, Stamper. Wide open. Good yeah, shot nothing but space. Nice. Welcome to these PBL games on Lacrosse TV. Very pleased to be back on Lacrosse TV and to have you with us. I'm Steven Stamp with Herbie John, and there's Austin Finger with a face-off win. And the hometown 
Elmira Renegades will try to get back into the early scoring on the game. They're down 2-0. The handoff there. Carson Reese setting a pick for Finger, who faked it. Makes a pass to the far side. Braden Wallace cut through the middle, but long outside shot from Owen Hill instead. Here's an outlet pass to Drake Smith. It just gets away from him. He gets it on the bounce. Takes the shot early to avoid the trail check from Owen Hill and just missed. And now we're going to see Stephen Portelli on the run for Elmira, but nice job by Binghamton to get some defenders back. Transition a huge part of this league, of this game, because there's a unique rule. If you're not familiar with it, we'll get to that in a moment as Wes Whitlow passes to the far side, gets it to Nick Miller, pulls it down, now has some space and fires. Johnson made the stop of the rebound. Is it good? It is. It was very close to the crease, but just staying out and tucking home. Bradley Boyd gets the Renegades on the board. Yeah, that was good awareness by Bradley Boyd. Picking up the trash on top of the crease there and get one past Kobe Johnson. Take a look here. Yeah, that was clean. You can pick up the ball as long as the ball goes in the net before you land in the crease. A couple close crease calls in that first game earlier. Davey, Andrew Davey picks it up, hands the ball off, and here come the Bombers trying to get that one back as they lead now two to one. Here's Voigt stepping around the check. He's got the man low. Bennett shoots, scores, sneaks at five hole. Davy Jones thought he had it close. You can see he was set, figured he had this, the gap taken up, but he did not quite, and Bennett found it. It was a good two-man game on that left side. Voigt and Bennett. Matthew Bennett comes up with the gold. Take a look here. Oh, yeah, I just squeezed it. Good shot by Matthew Bennett. Get around Davy Jones. So the rule about the changes is you have to leave the floor from the door closest to your goaltender, the goal that you're defending, and you have to enter the floor at the other one. That is your offensive door. So what it means is you can't take away the, team, the opponent's transition by having your forwards just run off to your offensive door and have somebody come out the other end and gain the length of the bench. Instead, you have to go down. You lose a couple times the length of the bench. So really encourages a fast transition game. Here's a drive to the net, another goal, and Davy Jones didn't look very ready for Jeff Dennis to just, or for, sorry, for um, Pierce Abrams to just let that one fly. Another heads up play by the Bombers, Pierce Abrams. He just seen numbers, seen open floor, take it to the hole. There it is. Started going pretty deep and then really cut sharply to the middle of the floor. A little defensive miscommunication there on uh, Elmira's behalf. Again, everyone kind of going up high. And Binghamton with a solid lead and the ball. Brian Conzola with it. Hands it off here to Cody Kilcoin, who tries to spin away from Braden Wallace. Wallace with a little tug on the stick. Drive to the net. Davy Jones stepped out to stop that attempt. Turning aside Jordan Jarvis. Elmira pushing the pace. Nick Miller on the run. Nice work by Ryan Masizek to take away that chance. The angle. Oh, what a tuck home, though, on the replay. And so far, Bradley Voigt is getting the best of the Voigt family derby. Yeah, another awareness play there. He's just picking up the trash. Again, you got to be aware where the loose ball is. Good effort there by the Renegades. It's always a little easier for the offensive guys, as you can see Voigt coming in. The defenders, you can see, oh, the pass was tipped. Or the ball coming out was tipped down. You see it, right? He gets yeah. tipped by the defender or yep. hits somebody's stick. Gives Void a great chance. He takes advantage. It's four to two. The Renegades get one back, and Portelli gets the move as they try to get another goal here. Jimmy Chadwick across the top, hands it over. Bouncer goes off the post. Back out to Portelli, they'll get a fresh 30 and set things back up again. Here's Chadwick trying to get underneath. Nice job by Aquilina, but then they did not even remotely cover Waylon Abrams, and he is wide open, takes that pass with a good man, the good on ball defense, but the off ball, a little lacking. 
Waylon Abrams just made himself available, moving yeah. around, going around the net, and like I said, off ball. Take a look. Good work there by number 43, Waylon Abrams. One other rule that uh, those of you who were following the PBLA earlier in the year and are now back with us for PBL action will remember is instead of a penalty, if there is a, a minor penalty, the, the opponents can opt to take a penalty shot instead of the two minute minor. If there's a major, they can opt to take a penalty shot and a two minute minor instead of the five minute major. Uh, it is now, it was earlier once per half, well twice per half, once per twice per half. It is now once per half. May have been a few too many penalty shots, I think, early on. I think so. We, we had discussed that after the game. And, uh, yeah. You know, we're just coming back. It's a good we tweak. Gotta, we got to get it back together here, and I think next week and moving forward, uh, everybody will be on the same page. Yeah. We got, so we're having double headers for in this. This is the Jim Thorpe Challenge. The four teams pretty close together here. We'll get to that in a second. As Kilcoin drives to the net, nice backdoor chance, but had to reach for the pass, and the shot just goes a little bit wide from McNabb. Or sorry, from Tyler Hill. Here's a break. Wallace on the run, Hill chasing him. Oh, that's a nice save. Kobe Johnson stands his ground and stands it again. Harris off the post, but I don't think Kobe Johnson gave him much space. Kobe, a really athletic goalie for such a big guy. I was talking to him, he was saying he's lost 100 pounds, 90 pounds. It looks good. Makes him even quicker, because he was remarkably athletic for his size before, and now it's just, he is flying around, stepped in, he's played some great lacrosse here for this club. Stephen Portelli, isolation on Smith. Drake Smith gets in on him. Johnson doesn't know where the rebound is. His defender ran through the crease to try and get it, and then Johnson found it. He'll make the outlet pass. We've got about a second and a half to get across center. They make it, and here comes Jordan Jarvis again. Pass across. Drake Smith will spin away. A little swim. Up to Jarvis. Toe drag, but Nick Miller, nice D on him. That one pinballs off a few players. Heads down into the corner. Smith's pass doesn't quite get through and snagged there by Miller. He's on the run. He's going to push it to his offside so his teammates can come with him. Jarvis may have got away with a bit of a grab there. <laughs> I saw your uh, your inner ref hand just about go up on that one. Yeah. Well, that was good effort by Jordan to get back. He wanted to change. You see him. He was trying to run off, but knowing he can't change on the defensive end and had to make an effort. Oh, and there's a lovely pass ahead, and just who Binghamton didn't want to see with the ball, Owen Hill, the deadly lefty, tucks that one home, and we're all tied up just under eight minutes into the first quarter. Another heads-up play right there. Owen Hill was just about to change, and turnover happened. He just turned around and got the head man right there, put it in. Tied up, 4-4, Stamper. Owen Hill has scored a ton of penalty shot goals for this team because he was their go-to guy yeah. and was almost unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, he and Skylar Thomas were just making themselves household names with penalty shot success. Yep. Yeah, I noticed that at the beginning of the, when the season started. And... <laughs> James Voigt was a little upset. Now he's going to get a delay a game penalty. The whole sequence, he was upset on the check on Ty Hill that sent him down near the boards. So, oh, wait, that's a penalty, right? What's he? I thought he was calling a delay a game because he kicked the ball away. I think it should have been a delay a game. They got away with it, and here comes Elmira looking for their first lead, but they're just turned aside. Carson Reese with the attempt. Carson's brother, Ryland, plays for the uh, Rochester Nighthawks, one of the absolute stud young defenders in the NLL, yeah. and uh, Carson is, a, you know, he's a forward for the most part, righty, and uh, boy, he ha he's had some terrific moments. Another product of British Columbia. That shot by Kilcoin is stopped, and Davey Jones, Davey Jones <laughs> covers it up, and it's scooped there. Logan Monroe moving it ahead, gets it up to Justin McKinney. Here's Owen Hill, the last goal scorer that tied it up for under six minutes. The next stoppage, we should have our media timeout. Portelli to the far side. Here's Chadwick. 
Looking for a spot, finds a hole that he likes, but that one gets into J.B. Jones' gear. And some pushing and shoving. Whitlow with Hill, and then somebody else jumps into it. It's getting feisty, and the refs are too busy breaking it all up. <laughs> and I think that's a friendly hug on the back of Owen Hill. Yeah, looks pretty friendly there from, who is that word, seven? Oh, it's 17, it is uh, Cody Kilcoin. So we'll have a couple of penalties. Looks like two penalties for Binghamton and one for Elmira. And are we gonna get the media timeout? We'll see. It's a slash coming first. We got John Sebek and Danny Tavares working it out, seeing who's seen what. Looks like Binghamton's got two guys in the box. Yeah, they had two guys go in which would make it five on four because the original ones would offset and stay at five on five. Get your pencils and notepads. Yep, they're getting it all sorted out. <laughs> Steve the PA guy is going to uh, share the penalties with us when he gets it communicated, but uh, looks like we should have a five on four. And haven't seen, again, you have the option for the penalty shot. So they could take this one. What do you, would you, uh, would you do it? This early in the game, four to four, I'd take a power play. Really? Yeah. Based on? Uh, just the way the game's already going yeah. right now, it's four to four, both are, you know, probably still feeling each other out. Binghamton's got a really small bench, right? So. They do? Uh, I would go with a power Make play them defend? Right I don't know, he started off down 4-2, you've come back to tie it up and you've got Owen Hill who's almost automatic, so you can take the lead, I don't know. Oh, they may actually, what are they deciding? I think we may be seeing the penalty shot here. It looks like Brian Hobart's agreeing with me. A little explanation, because of all the penalties they have to sort out, make sure everyone's on, on board. Yeah, it is gonna be a penalty shot, I just saw John Civic cross his arms in the signal. So, there will be, as I mentioned, there will be four weekends of double headers. So, it's this Saturday, tonight, next Friday, uh, we, all the dates will be available shortly. There'll be uh, four weekends of double headers among the four teams, which is Syracuse, Spark, the uh, Jim Thorpe All Americans, and these two, the Elmira Renegades and Binghamton Bombers, will play double headers for four weeks, and then there will be a championship uh, with the first and fourth place teams and the second and third place teams meet, and then a championship. And we'll talk about it a little bit more after we see Owen Hill try to give the Renegades their first lead. Couple of fakes. Oh, he is just, he just fakes and fakes. Always in control, wait till he sees the spot he wants. It's the, it's the same move all the time, Stamper. You don't yeah. have to change it, it works. Yeah. Don't change nothing. Good shot there, Owen Hill. Just so patient. Oh, so smooth. What a stroke, Owen Hill. There will also be the weekend of St. Patrick's Day, so the 17th to 19th, there will be a players invitational tournament with seven of the nine teams that were in the PBLA. Seven of them are coming together to do a, a tournament for the weekend that will decide a champion for the Players Invitational. It'll be a double eliminate, double knockout, double uh, elimination. And uh, that will go a couple of games in Onondaga on the Friday, the 17th, and then four games right here in Elmira on Saturday the 18th, and then the sixth place, third place, and championship games on a Sunday, March 19th. So that's gonna be a big weekend. You're gonna be a busy guy because you're gonna be refing and announcing as well, right? Yeah, we uh, just found out today our our referee roster just slimmed it right down also, so uh, a few things to work out in the next coming weeks, you know. And, well, you might be slimming down too, Herbie. Yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of running. Yeah. I should well, get out and do some running. Needed. Much needed. <laughs> yeah. So 5-4, the Renegades are ahead and they have the ball and they are on a four on three power play. So I'm not entirely sure. I believe Killcoin and- You got a double? Killcoin and- uh, Oh, we have a goal. We'll get back to that in a moment. Carson Reese, we talked to him a little while ago. He finds his spot and just bangs one home 
from the top of the crease. In the four on three is almost impossible to defend if it's played right. Right. Okay. Kill coins re release. He had the two minute unsportsmanlike, and yeah. uh, Ryan Lewis and Wes Whit Whitlow each had the slash and roughing coins that I know. We should be five on five here, Stafford. We're four on four, and I don't. I'm not. I'm a little confused. That's all right. Things will sort themselves as we're down under five minutes in the first quarter of the second game of the doubleheader here on opening night of Jim Thorpe Challenge Action. Here's Carson Reese, scored the last goal, driving to the net and has another one, but they say crease. So the Bombers will get it back and boy, it was four to two, was it four to one? Or Binghamton was well ahead, it's quite a run here for the Renegades. Bombers gonna try and stem that Get things going back their own way as Jake McNabb with the one hand pass. Nice flip, but the shot was partially blocked and rolled right to Davy Jones. A little adventure, scooping up that pass from Bro by Brody LeBorn, but gets to Owen Hill and they come into the offensive zone. Kevin Owen Hill was playing in the first game tonight. Good to see him, uh, him back out. Yep. It's nice when they're not on the same team. <laughs> you know, with an Owen Hill and a Kevin Owen Hill, it can get a little confusing. I called some uh, World Juniors games with the two of them playing for the Haudenosaunee, the Iroquois at the time. There's a rip from Owen Hill from the outside. The oh. Miller's gonna get it back. You can reach into the crease and grab that ball. As long as it's not under the goalie stick, you can't whack his stick out of the way, but you can go get it. And a uh, nice job by Miller to get it back in a fresh possession for the Renegades who are absolutely on a tear here. Portelli takes from Geddes. Trying to get underneath. Managed to get pretty much past Ryan Lewis, but there's a low to high shot. That one's stopped by Kobe Johnson. He's gonna outlet, and here comes James Voigt. Kobe Johnson taking some action. A lot of action already here in this first quarter here. Yeah, the momentum has really swung heavily towards the Renegades as we've gone along. Under three minutes to go in this first quarter, and that's going to be a holding call. <laughs> Jake McNabb was looking over to John Civic like, are you not going to call that? And he said, yes, I am, actually. That's why my hand's in the air. Now we'll see. The uh, Bombers still have their penalty shot to use. We'll see if they opt to apply it here. Looks like they'll take the power play, five on four. Yeah. Okay. So they will go up a man for two minutes and attempt to get back in. Drake Smith's gonna be the top as they go strong right. He'll come over to Bennett on the near side, downloaded to Jarvis. McNabb's shot was just a little off the mark, but they do get it back, They're down to 10 on the shot clock. Smith hands it off. Jarvis, hard rip. Just missed. It comes off the back boards, and Davy Jones fighting for it, comes away with it. Manicola, a nifty footwork around center, avoiding the over and back, and gets the ball handed off. Jimmy Chadwick starts to spin out. There's a couple of bombers on him. And we're gonna have an illegal substitution on Elmira. Another decision to make for the Bombers. I'm curious here, because now you'd be, you're going five on three, so I'd, I wouldn't take a penalty the shot here. Yep. Oh, he is doing it, okay, interesting. I would have thought, you know, you go with the five on three. So that's probably just as high a percentage as the, uh, as the penalty shot. I'm not sure what he's calling there. I think he called a illegal substitution. Illegal substitution yeah. on offense. Okay. So that's maybe one of the calls that we got to work on uh, moving forward in the first game. Uh, the same call was made, but it was just a possession call. Oh, that's a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that's a hit leftover from the summer. Yeah. Yep. So Jake McNabb 
who have come in. He's already been a contributor so far. He comes in with some speed. A bunch of fakes. Oh, Twister, five hole. He saw something he liked. He could see his, even as we're looking to the back of him, you could see Jake McNabb's eyes just light up. Puts it in for his second goal of the game. Jake McNabb brings Binghamton six. I'm sorry, Binghamton five, Elmira six. 156 remaining here in the first quarter. Boy, he's quite a shooter. Finger comes away with it to himself. Maloney looking for somebody to get the ball to. So Binghamton still on the power play. Elmira can kill, still 23 seconds on this 30. Josh Harris will just lob one down. Binghamton playing really lax defense on this man up advantage. Yeah, they're just kind of letting Elmira go. Now that's, again, that might be a function. Their bench is a little short. They uh, you know, had a bunch of guys who had some commitments. They should be back up to full. That was the one thing with you know getting a lot of work, a lot of effort went into getting things rolling here, getting this PBL underway. It did mean there was maybe not as much advanced notice as some people could have used to get when we get started again. But I mean that's the nature of the beast. I you know you gotta give the all kinds of credit to you know Steve Donner and everyone involved in making this thing get rolling again. And uh, I, I know the folks here in Elmira were excited the whole time and they are fired up to have their team back and playing and I think things are gonna really pick up. Oh what a rip Jake McNabb speaking of picking up he picks up his hat trick. Everyone's just kind of Standing still for a minute there. Didn't look like much, much was happening, so he said, I'll just make something happen. Again, you're all alone. Nobody's defending you. Take the shot. For his hat trick, Jake McNabb. Yeah, got, got a really nice crowd here at Elmira First Nation, or First, what's this place called? Where First Arena. First Arena. Yeah. <laughs> nice job zipping in there. By McKinney to grab that one after Finger had pulled pulled it back off the face off. McKinney. Thank you. Was a pretty active little shift for him. Now he heads to the bench. And Elmira will set up on the power play. We've got 18 seconds left in the quarter. We're all tied up. Oh. Whitlow going to the net. Nice move. Just missed on the far side. Owen Hill trying to get to it. He does, or it's picked up actually by Waylon Abrams and is that, that's the, oh, the 30 had expired. So just seven seconds left. <laughs> TV Jones, or sorry, uh, Kobe Johnson says, I'll just head to the bench, not for an extra attacker. He was just getting over to get ready for a rest. We are going to take a three minute break and we'll be back with quarter number two. It's 6-6 six, six. after 15 minutes of play. Elmira and Binghamton from Elmira on Lacrosse Television. I'm Stephen Sam with Herbie John. Thanks for being with us, Lacrosse Friends. We'll see you in 180 seconds. Welcome back, Lacrosse Friends. Looks like we are ready to roll for quarter number two of this first broadcast PBL game. We did have the Jim Thorpe win over the Syracuse Spark earlier. Jim Thorpe who went four and one in the PBLA season and uh, definitely established themselves as the class. And uh, you know, that was the first PBLA game was Syracuse and Jim Thorpe up in uh, Six Nations, I was calling that one. And uh, it's fun to see the two teams back again, a couple of quality clubs. And now we have a quality game in this 6-6 six, six tie as it comes up to Braden Wallace. He's gonna let one rip at the 30, it's a fresh, it's a reset. There's a bit of a confusion because it was shot right at the buzzer. And nobody was quite clear what was going on, but they picked it up, heads up play. Down along the boards here, and now Chadwick has it, will go to the net. Worked on everything pretty well, but was just running out of steam as he was double team checked. And then he gets hit by the ball in the shot by Braden Wallace. Long outlet pass. Using the chest to protect it, corral it to himself. Nice job there by Pierce Abrams, but it got away under the triple team. Here comes Nick Miller. Abrams will come back and play some defense. Nick Miller flips it to the man off the bench. Portelli hands it off. 
Josh Harris will make the pass and then go to the bench for a fresh attacker. Most teams will play going up on offense, then go back on D and then go to the bench because that way you can go to the bench, get the length of the length of the, of the bench on the change. But different strategies attempted. It's a nice save by Johnson, but Owen Hill picks it up and behind the back attempt. Nice try there from Carson Reese, looking for his second. And Portelli is back. The one thing, both teams have fairly dark jerseys, and I think the uh, Elmira player, or the Binghamton player there, looked ahead and thought for a moment of passing it to Stephen Portelli, who is a uh, renegade. On the run, Finger, a little fake to Hill, goes the other way, the diving attempt. Nice effort there by Harris, who is a all Canadian long pole and defender and uh, LSM with the uh, with McGill in Kufla Canadian University Field Lacrosse Association. Sorry, with Brock. Oh, I said it. Brock Badgers. He's shown some uh, pretty good skill set for a guy who spent most of his you know field career playing with a six foot pole. There's a long shot from the outside. We'll whistle play down as we have a slashing call coming. It's going to be Joe Manicola heading to the box. Again, both teams have used their penalty shot option for the first half. They will have another one in the second half, but for now, we're going to the man advantage. Drake Smith, as they go strong right again, will have it at the top for the Renegades. Smith, who was ripping it up last year with the Paris River Wolves in the Arena Lacrosse League. Here comes out to McNabb. I believe was his teammate there. McNabb also spent some time, I believe, with the uh, Colorado Mammoth. Here's an outlet, a break by Wallace. McKinney wants the ball, but Wallace wasn't sure the pass was there, and then he winds up getting stripped. And now a chance for Tyler Hill. Oh, great fake, but absolutely rings it off the post. We have fresh 30 and a renewed possession as Smith picks this one up. Greg Smith, if you're wondering, yes, he is the uh, brother of Dane Smith, the great Dane. Was also drafted by Buffalo in the NLL. Nice save there by Davey Jones with the left hand. But, uh, not quite sure what the goal of that was. It does get to LeBourne, but he's going to be shoved off the ball, and Drake Smith gets it. Here's a, a shot, yeah, I was gonna say, I think McNabb's gonna shoot. He waited a bit, did rip one past Harris. But a stop by Davy Jones, who makes the outlet pass. Here's Brady LeBorn. Brody LeBorn, sorry. Wes Whitlow on the run, sees the lane, but Ty Hill takes it away, he slips. He's picked up by James White. Some nice help defense. They do, of course, have the extra player. Getting late in the 30, so they just let a, a shot rip. And about eight seconds left in the penalty. Things will be evened up. Binghamton's probably not going to take a shot here yet. They're going to wait until Manicola gets out. That pass doesn't get through, but it is scooped up by Pierce Abrams. He spins and gets a shot as he's double teamed. Gets away from McNabb. He tried to reach back and get it with one hand. Who did it go off? It was off of Nick Miller. So Binghamton will get a fresh 30 in possession. Andrew Davey. Over to Abrams and then down along the far boards. That shot wide by Voigt. Jimmy rolled over to him by McNabb. Skips away though. Menicola working for it against a couple of Bombers, but the Bombers come away. And Jordan Jarvis says, I feel like I was getting swatted there. Or sorry, that's uh, James White. Oh, nice. Oh, and it just gets away en route to the net. Here's a pass up to Kilcoin. A couple of changes coming for the Bombers after they get that reset. 
McNabb goes behind the back, but he's getting checked by Miller as he did. Goes off target. Chadwick couldn't get his. He was outfought oh. by Hops. Oh, what a pickup and finish. Nice alertness there. That's Cody Kilcoin once again. He just caught Davy Jones out of position. Davy wanted to come out and grab the rebound, but just out of position a little too much there, and Cody Kilcoin beat him to it. Yeah, Davy Jones stepping out, trying to get big when he realized that Kilcoin was going to have the ball right on top of the crease, but Kilcoin very quick to get the stick up over the shoulder. And of course, once you step out as a goalie like that, if they can get it over here, you're done. That's kind of my specialty being 6 9 when I'm playing. If the goalie comes off the line, I'm all about going up over the top. Yep. Yeah, shot's a little bit high. Thank you. Abrams gets it back. Waylon Abrams with a shot from outside. Pings off the hand of Kobe Johnson. Goes straight back to Wallace. That low pass kind of handcuffed Wes Whitlow, but he does get it back. Tries to feed it through to Waylon Abrams. Tips off the top of his stick. Had some stretches of kind of hyper scoring with lots of goals, and now we're having a bit of a dry stretch on the score sheet. Masizek and the Bombers will try and change that up. Oh, nice pick off. That's good defense there. Yeah, LeBorn got the stick in the passing lane. Nice pass to Logan Monroe. He's got a man with him, shoots. That's a good decision by Monroe. Took what was available, Owen oh, Wallace is hurt. The goal is really gonna sting. Or sorry, take a bit of the sting out of it because it's his own team that scored. And Braden Wallace though, is down on the floor, looking pretty uncomfortable. This will mitigate the joy of the celebration. That's a beauty though. I'm wondering if Braden Wallace hit that. There's a hump in that corner down there, Stamper, yeah. where Wallace just went down or he might have taken something after the play, but down in that corner to the left side of Kobe Johnson, there's a little bit of a little, the carpet comes up a little bit. Yeah. Ways. yeah. I thought it looked like, I mean, Wallace was hurting because the, the, uh, he was obviously limping as he went towards the crease and heads up play by him after the shot and the save to make sure he got out of the crease because he had to get out and reestablish himself outside of the crease before uh, before we could go, before his teammate could score. And we are going to the media timeout. It is 7-7 here on a Lacrosse TV. I'm Stephen Stamp with Herbie John bringing you PBL action. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back to Lacrosse, friends. Quick break and we're back underway. And the ball rolls all the way down to Kobe Johnson. Gets away from him. And Jimmy Chadwick's going after, but Johnson is able to corral that ball before trouble ensues. Gets it ahead to Aquilino. Aquilano. And here comes. Elmire up in, or Binghamton into the offensive zone. Again, 7-7. Seven, seven. That one just skips away from Jordan Jarvis. 10 on the shot clock. Tries a behind the back pass. Got it a little bit low. McNabb did get it. That's a great pass through. What a save. Was that crossbar or the shoulder pad? That went off the crossbar. Crossbar. On the attempt by Derek Hobbs. That's a good goal. Danny Tavares signaled the reset and had everybody turned around. Yeah, remember, it's not the, the buzzer that indicates the 30. It's the referee has to call it. you got to keep playing because the, the shot clock operator can't necessarily react that quickly. And you can see the uh, Renegades aren't very happy, but that's the call when the, the I mean, there it's like, I, I liken it to the, uh, it's a nice finish there by Kilcoin, but I liken it to the the snap at the end of the uh, shot, the uh, play clock in football, where, you know, it, it, sometimes it looks like it's a bit late, but you've got until it goes down to zero. And in this case, you got till the ref blows his whistle, it's not the buzzer. So it's, it's a decision, it's the human element, and there's a reason for that. So I get it, I get why Elmira doesn't like it. Nonetheless, the Bombers go back up eight to seven as we're past the midpoint of the second quarter. I'm Steven Stamp with Herbie John here on Lacrosse TV. Whole bunch of fakes from Lucas Maloney. He just keeps running and scores. 
kind of funny. It was, looked like he wanted to find somebody to pass to. It wasn't there, so he just did a little loop. Kind of a question mark dodge, I guess you'd call it in field. And then uh, everything just opened up. Not a good stick work there. Yep. Gets in, keeps his feet moving. Gets his hands free. Nobody really teed up on him. Gave yeah. him a lane. That's good work by Maloney. First goal of the game. 8-8, eight, eight, we're tied again, Sniper. Oh, it's just been a game of runs, but very short runs. Started out with the one. There's the one long Elmira run after Binghamton got up some. Uh, since El since uh, Binghamton came back to tie it up, nobody's been able to pull ahead. Great work there to stay, keep from going over center by Monroe. And then a lovely pass to Owen Hill, who just misses the net with alacrity. Picked up by Abrams, gets it back to Hill. They've got 16 to shoot. Kobe Johnson steps out of the crease. And he's gonna have to wing it down the floor. Ooh. That's a hit from behind and a penalty. Little overzealous by Justin McKinney. And he'll be going to the box. Again, each team has used their penalty shot option for the half, so we're going to have a power play for the Bombers, see if they can take the lead once again. Minutes checking from behind for Justin McKinney there. He didn't really play the ball. Just went straight for the man. John Civic was right there to penalize him. Power play for the Bombers coming up. That was a fairly obvious call, I thought. He ran right over him with the possession, not even in his the ball, not even in his possession. That shot's wide. Pings off the boards. McNabb had a little trouble tracking it down, but it's just gonna roll out to Drake Smith. Hard rip, but another save by Davy Jones. Davy Jones looking really good. Here's Menicola on the run. He's got Chadwick with him. Little collision with the end board. Hopefully, yeah, it looks like everyone's all right. The hustle by Kilcoin to get back in D. Now there's a chance for Rent Binghamton, and they take it. That is McNabb, who has been the key to this, uh, the finishing for these Bombers so far. And they go back up 9-8. McNabb with his fourth goal of the game. Yeah, it's not really anything new for him. He scored a ton of goals in his career. You know, it's really good to see Jordan Jarvis out there with Binghamton Bombers. I haven't, uh, it's been a while since I've seen him actually play. Maybe since he actually had his knee injury. And, uh, you know, just a good shout out there to Jordan Jarvis with the Binghamton Bombers. He was pretty excited to draw into the lineup tonight. Yeah, yeah. Get his chance to return to the floor. He's moving pretty well. He looks, uh, you know, he looks right at home. Here's Voigt. He's got a couple. Everything just opens up, but a bit of a, a partial block there. A nice recovery. And hops after making that partial block, he's going to take the outlet pass. Boy, that looked like it was going to be a wide open lane. Bombers slow things down a little. Coming down to the final five minutes of the first half and Steven Stamp with Herbie John. This is PBL on Lacrosse TV. Sturdy D, but Ryan Masizek just fights through it. That's a nice pounce by Jones onto that loose ball. Well, fans are getting into it. Yeah. They like that. They like the interaction. Yep. If you, I don't know if you could hear it on the broadcast, but the PA announcer like asks them what Davy Jones says, and uh, a whole bunch of them yelling no. Ooh, that was a, possibly a check from behind into the boards there, but play will go on and Binghamton into the offensive zone. Aquilino to Smith. Oh, great passing, but Davy Jones, what a super save. And now way up the floor, Jimmy Chadwick all alone. Nice save, Kobe Johnson. Oh, but there's, he's lost the ball in there. Renegades all around him. Oh. What an effort by Kobe. Kobe, what an effort, he loses the helmet. You gotta play blow play down, don't you? If the ref goalie loses his helmet. 
No, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll continue. Yeah, normally uh, the helmet comes off the goalie. He just, what an effort by Kobe Johnson, though, to get out there. What a beauty. We've talked yeah. before about what a great guy Kobe is, yeah. the work he does with the Boys and Girls Club yeah. back in uh, Aquasasne. Uh, <laughs> and Owen Hill has the ball tossed to him. He already has one in his stick, so he just kicks it up to his hand and tosses it back to John Simic. Or sorry, that was uh, Danny Torres. Oh. oh, laser from the outside. Carson Reese, very different to his earlier goal. That looked like a carbon copy, though, of one that, that uh, Jake McNabb had earlier. You know, that uh, seems to be the hot spot for El uh, Elmira. That, that top right shooter area. Yeah. Everything's going in from there. Kind of dropped down three quarters a little bit. Didn't go dead overhead. Changing the plane a little bit. 9-9, we're tied up again. This one looks destined to go back and forth. What a drive to the net by Jarvis. Behind the back beauty, oh, nice. Jake McNabb with five. And that might be the nicest one yet. Yes, yep. See how the play began. Jordan Jarvis came off the bench, got that loose ball, and just dished it off to McNabb. That was a nice play. I think Elmira might be complaining that he might it might have been a procedure coming off before the ball was great loose. Either way, that's a goal. 10-9, Bombers. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, they, maybe they're right. I don't know. But regardless, that's well after that, the issue they're concerned about, you just got to go play. Yeah. Austin Fingers talking to
saying, hey, he, he's not allowed to do that. And uh, that's why as a, as a ref, you just have to eat it and say, yeah, we made a mistake, but we can't change that, right? Right, yeah. I like that. I like it when you take responsibility as, a, as an official. I mean, yeah. we all make mistakes. I don't yeah, think Brian Hobart likes it. You see Jordan <laughs> pleading his case now. Yeah. Again, like I said, everything will get better, you know, as the, the series moves on. We're back in action. It's an exciting game, and with that, it is a one-goal lead once again. And Owen Hill trying to negate that. That's a nice defensive play there. Great positioning. I'm trying to figure who that is wearing 13 for Binghamton. I don't, we don't have it on the list. And we'll double check that one in the half for you as well. Here's Hill with it still down to eight seconds. Oh, what a shot. Owen Hill from the outside. Just rockets it. He gets a nice little tap from Jake McNabb. That's a shooter appreciating a shooter. Owen Hill just smooth with it. You know, yeah. every time he touches the ball. Look at the patience. Patience, patience. Take it. Take the shot. Yeah. Good shot, Owen. And the thing, I mean, he doesn't have a lot of room, and then all of a sudden he does, and it's gone. Yes. As soon as he, you know, and you can see McNabb is thinking Hill's coming across the top, so he stays back, so on Hill says, I'll just stop right here. <laughs> nice shot by Finger to come away with it to himself, as it is all tied up once again at 10. It's a high scoring game. Yeah. We got three minutes to go in the first half. We're at 10 all already. Owen Hill hands it down. Jimmy Chadwick puts a couple of pops. Going across the top. Oh, nice catch by Whitlow. The little sidearm bouncer on the run goes wide. Four on the shot clock. I think they're letting him know. Yeah, he's going to pass it through. Oh, what patience! And Waylon Abrams pings it off the post. Harris stepped over center to grab that one. He probably would have been better off actually wait behind center and not risk it over back, but it works out okay. What a decision by Owen Hill, knowing he had that extra second or so, and there was time to make the pass. A lot of guys will rush it. Here's Andrew Davey, he's got the man down the floor, sees him, gets it to him. Here comes McNabb. Oh, what a save, Davey Jones. And there's Owen Hill getting up the, picking up the rebound. The two top scorers in this game. Throws it ahead to Miller. Two minutes to go in the half. 10-10, but I do believe it's a goalie's game, Stamper. I, I was just thinking the same thing. It's been pretty good goaltending for a game with 20 goals in the first half, and there's a penalty. That's going to be goalie interference. That or rebound was it? just hit off the, the pipe. Yeah, yeah they, they pick it up, and we will have the... Oh, no. It's going to be the other way. Sorry, it's against Binghamton on the drive from the night. I thought it was the player running into the goalie, but it's going to be Jarvis going. Okay. So he's going to say check from behind that drove him into, the drove the floor and into the net. So a chance for Elmira to take the lead for the first time in a while. Again, they were down 4-1, four 4-2, to one, four to two, came back, got ahead, 6-4, to four, and then the Bombers creep back. And it was the Owen Hill penalty shot that put them ahead, right, for the first time. And we're going to have a penalty shot now. No, you can't. They've already no, taken they've it. They've already taken it. Oh, I, I think, is Danny Tavares saying it's his call? Because they don't have the option to take the penalty shot. I don't quite understand why that would be penalty shot because it wasn't a breakaway that was interfered with. No, I was just thinking the same thing. Like, I don't know if we can see the replay again, but if you know, he was by, all by himself, which I don't think he was. No. I don't, I don't get it. It was delayed. Sorry, folks. Wish I had an answer for you. And Drake Smith is talking to Dan Tavares and saying, you get one penalty shot option per half. Why are they getting another one? And the PA announcers in, they have the option, but they don't. This is, a, I think this is a mistake, but here comes Owen Hill, and that is not the guy that Kobe Johnson There's wants to see, D. and that's why. Oh. And Kobe was playing 
Kobe was over playing to the far side. Here you go. Oh, wait. No goal. Was that Crease? Yeah, it was Crease waved off. It was overturned by Clint Doolittle. Okay. Overturned John Civic's call. Okay. Hopefully we get a replay on that one and see exactly what happened. From this view, Stamper looked really close. Really close. I am Steven Stamp. He is Herbie John, and we are pleased to be bringing you this PBL action from First Arena in Elmira on Lacrosse TV. Minute and a half to go in the half. And Austin Finger absolutely flattens Pierce Abrams after the shot, but the Bombers get it back as we are still tied 10-10. I think, you know what, I think it's good that that goal didn't count because he shouldn't have had the penalty shot. Right. Oh! oh wow. That was Austin Finger. <laughs> he is bringing the heat. Huge hit. Knocking Jordan Jarvis down. Remember how excited Jordan Jarvis was to be playing earlier? Might be a little less so. Yeah. <laughs> Probably go ahead and jump in that ice bath at halftime, 15 minutes. <laughs> right? Oh, great pass through, but Chadwick is knocked down by Miss Isaac. Nice pass by Nick Miller. Boy, I tell you, Nick Miller makes a few plays, a couple plays a game where he's just like, wow. That pass doesn't connect, so the Bombers are going to have to slow things down. McNabb has it. He's got the man in front. Smith all alone scores. That is beautiful passing. Such poise by every member of that passing play to make it happen for Binghamton. It started on the defensive end with uh, e route Derek Hopps pushed the ball mm -hmm. on the floor. I think e route came in a little late. I don't remember seeing him at the beginning of the introductions. But uh, good to see him also, Derek Hopps. I think he was here. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I saw him before the game. Oh, okay. I'm sure. Right. I'm pretty sure. Boy, I love that passing. You know, Drake Smith, the recipient. But what a lovely play from McNabb getting it to him. So Elmira will try and tie things up. They're going to take their time out for the first half. And we've got 20.7 on the game clock. It's almost identical to the shot clock. So I think they've, yeah, they've actually put the game clock onto the shot clock. That's a nice feature of the shot clocks here that you can have the game clock up. I love that so everyone can see it. You don't have guys looking up. And they're going to bring Kobe Johnson some water, which he has well earned. Davey Jones makes his way to the bench and he will, I assume, stay there for the extra attacker. There's a Nick Miller fan up on the board. Look for Elmira to move the ball across crease a lot coming, coming out of this timeout. Yeah, they got lots of time to work with. 20.7, probably go around eight to play, I guess, to start their, start their move. Anyone who's fairly new to box across, the idea there is you don't want to start and your play and, and take a shot with four or five seconds left because then if the other team gets the ball, they've got a chance at the empty net. You want to be shooting with basically less than three seconds to go so they don't have time to whip the length of the floor. So they will wait, 17 to go. Down to 12. A few more seconds and they will start to go. The ball on the stick of Carson Reese gets it back. Watch for Wes Whitlow on a crease. Owen Hill going through, shoots, they save. Oh, what a finish, Voigt catches and shoots all in midair, and it is tied again with no time left on the clock, but he beat the buzzer. Kobe Johnson first one to the locker room after that one. Oh, what a play, look at that. Okay, his feet were on the ground when he grabbed it. Now, let's look, are his feet on the crease? That's the big question. That was great. Wow, it was close, but what a finish to the half. And we go once again tied 11-11. We will take a break here on Lacrosse TV and at the PBL. I'm Stephen Stamp with Herbie John. Thanks so much for being with us, Lacrosse friends. We'll be back in 15 minutes for quarter number three. It's basically a 0-0 game again at 11-11. We'll see you soon. Welcome back, Lacrosse friends, to PBL action on Lacrosse TV. I'm Stephen Stamp, joined by Herbie John. Very pleased to be with you and bringing you this action in the Jim Thorpe Challenge. Again, there are four teams in the Jim Thorpe Challenge. It is these two, the Binghamton Bombers and Elmira Renegades, who are all tied up at 11-11, along with the Jim Thorpe All-Americans and 
the Syracuse Spark, who played earlier today. Jim Thorpe winning that game. Was it 16-11? 16-11, yes. Yeah. And uh, they will play four double headers over the course of four weekends and then have a championship weekend to wrap everything up. And Binghamton is going to have the first chance to try and take a lead here in the second half. Uh, swooping in with James Voigt. Does a nice job avoiding trouble and gets to Matt Bennett, who goes down low, and Andrew Davey with the chance. That one's a little bit wide. Gets up and out of play, and it will be Elmira possession. Now, why is it showing 12 and 11 when it was 11 11? Uh, it was just 11 11. I'm a little confused. Sorry, the scoreboard up on the. <laughs> above the. Oh. the uh, you know, that looked pretty creasy. But uh, here's Nick Miller. There's a save by Kobe Johnson. Teams do defend the same goal for the second and third quarters, which is the goal farthest from their bench, which does allow them to a bit better chance in the first and the fourth. So they defend the goal closest to their bench in the first, and then again in the fourth, which gives them a chance to pull the goalie late in the game. That outlet pass to Drake Smith doesn't connect. Then the spin Gets it going away from him, but Smith tracks it down before anyone else can get there, and Binghamton will have the ball once again. We're going to have to check for you on the scoring situation, because it was, we talked about it quite a bit, how it was 11-11 at the half. We didn't miss a goal at the beginning of the half here, did we? Okay. Besides it going back on D, and Miller takes the pass and scores. Beauty going against the green. That is a nice pass to set it up by Logan Monroe. And then a beautiful finish. You can see him get Kobe Johnson going to his left, back to the goalie's right. RPM, Ryan Masizek there. He was just a little late on the crossover slide there. A little bit. Yeah. You got to make your choice, right, whether you're going to take the pass or the shot. So maybe the uh, whoever does the score clock was just prescient and knew a goal was about to come. As Elmira gets one, and now it is actually 12 to 11. Wow. We'll have to keep an eye on. Maybe they'll uh, predict the next goal as well. <laughs> yeah. Diving attempt. That was close to the crease again. Nice effort by Hops. Derek Hops, his brother Zachary, also in the uh, in the league in the PBL. They had a, a family derby earlier in the year that we uh, got to call. And it's fun seeing the guys. Work. I don't know if if you haven't heard tonight. The uh, Voigt brothers are on opposing teams. Here's Waylon Abrams going to the net. It's wide, bounces out to Owen Hill. He's trying to protect it, kicks it up to himself. Nice job by Maloney to swoop in there. Looks Maloney gets the ball, but the 30 expires, and the ball will go back over to the Bombers. Kilcoin thought about the long bomb pass, but realized there wasn't a whole lot of benefit, even if he did connect it, and it would have been tough. So they still have it. A little fake by Abrams. That one bounces off the boards. It's grabbed by Smith. It gets away from him with Brody LeBorn all over him. And here come the Renegades. Logan Monroe made that nice pass earlier to set up a recent goal. He's going to slow things down a little. Jake McNabb had stayed up the floor. That's why we were looking at some four on four for a bit. Go ahead, Herbie. This game's real conservative. Oh, nice. Great save. It wasn't counted anyway because it was a crease violation on the drive to the net. Yeah, I was saying this This game's really a conservative game. I've noticed the, the, the passing around crispy versus the last game, Jim Thorpe's and Syracuse game. That ball was hot. It was, it was flying. Yes. Oh, Ooh, what an effort there. Behind the back by a couple of saves by Davy Jones. Taking their time here, and then the underhand rip from McNabb. Davy Jones saw that one and swallowed it up.
And, I mean, you look at the, the earlier game. Well, we'll get to that in a second. But that pass attempt is knocked down. But going back to it, it was Whitlow. He rolls away from him. 11 on the shot clock. Oh, that's hard off the far post by Carson Reese, who's really starting to feel it. Owen Hill will track it down. It'll be a fresh 30 as Davy Jones picks it up. But we're saying the last game, you know, the earlier tonight was a really high caliber, high octane affair, and that was between Jim Thorpe, who went four and one in the PBLA season, and Syracuse, who were two and two, but lost their first two games and then changed things entirely strategically and won their next two. And they were the they're the first and second seeds in the Players Invitational Tournament to be held on the St. Patrick's Day weekend. So, yeah, you, you know, those are some really, those are impressive teams. Yes. Now, Elmira and, and Binghamton, a lot of positive things going for them as well, but they finished a little bit further down. Binghamton was one and two. They're actually the seventh seed for that tournament. Elmira is two and two. They are the third seed, so. Nice save by Davy Jones, shutting down McNabb's attempt for the five hole. And the outlet pass, will it get there? It will not. Good hustle back by Kilcoin, and I think Manicola needed to go back to the ball on that one. Yeah. You gotta make the effort. The ball's not gonna come to you all the time. Oh, good work right there, effort by Kilcoin. Steps in the crease as he was all tangled up and couldn't get the shot away, yeah. but nice hard work. Owen Hill and Wes Whitlow had me fooled there for a second. <laughs> As an announcer, once in a while when you get fooled like that, <laughs> like, wait, what's going on? I do not understand. We've got seven still on the shot clock behind the back attempt by Voigt. That's Bradley Voigt, the younger. Trying for the backdoor attempt, but dropped into the crease. 30 expires, and here comes Binghamton the other way. They trail by one. Here's a drive to the end. Oh, Drake Smith tries a little reach tuck shot, but Davy Jones is on it. Shovel pass ahead by Harris. He finds Nick Miller. Backdoor attempt. That's a nice play, but just missing. Another post. <laughs> yeah. Boy, Justin McKinney went up into the air with the splits a little bit to go up and get that and shoot while he was in midair. Just about found it. Nice pass. Oh, the save, though, by Johnson. Did it even? Yeah, it did go off of Kobe Johnson on the attempt there by Waylon Abrams. Brian Hobart, the Elmira head coach, was saying before the game, they're pretty excited to have Waylon Abrams playing out there with Owen Hill, where they've got a lot of chemistry already. They've spent a lot of time playing together in the past. And yep. Here's Ty Hill. Ty's been in the spot you're in, not in this building, but had Ty jump up and do some uh, lax eye color commentary with me. Yeah. Another good dude, Tyler Hill. Oh, great guy. And penalty coming. I don't know what Danny DeFire has seen there. Yeah. Unsportsmanlike, and you can hear Danny DeVaris say, I think Brody LeBourne said something like, you know, hey, just, just, you know, have a thick machine. And, and Danny DeVaris said, I'm trying to. I was trying. He just kept going. And as an official, you do talk to him, and we are going to see a penalty shot, the first of the second half. It'll be Jake McNabb. Remember the beauty where he came left to right, went across, and then went twister back between the legs. What's he going to do this time? Oh, just goes high to high. I think he had Davy Jones thinking five hole and just drifts it over the shoulder. I was just going to say, I don't think Davy was even set. Yeah. He was still moving, didn't know where to go. He was ready to shift. That was a good shot there. Good placement. Yeah. Is that six for Jake McNabb? Yes, it is. Yep. Wow. Sock trick. I don't think anybody had their socks ready because they're not littering the floor. <laughs> they don't want my socks after that last <laughs> game we just read. <laughs> Herbie, you, you said partway through the first half, you, we had a little break. You said you were cramping up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get some fluids in you. Yeah, get some water sure. in. Oh, I hit that fruit. I hit that fruit stand back there in, uh, in the locker room right away. <laughs> but, oh, well, like I said, it's been a long winter and uh, fresh off the couch, but it's 
very much enjoyable to be back on the floor. I know your kids keep you running around, oh, though. for sure, yes. Yep. Uh, it's great to have you up in the booth again. So much fun to do a game with you again. Herbie John, who I, people always talk to me about how much I know about the players and the game and everything, and I really appreciate it. But, oh, what a goal. We're going to come back to that. A twister, hard twister, Waylon Abrams. That didn't even look that dangerous until he took the shot. Still wide open, untouched. Throw that twister. Good work there. Look at this. Nice dodge. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, hard twister. He went right around D-Rock. Oh, yeah. Nice goal, Waylon. That's what, you know, the, just the uh, the pull with the bottom hand there, right? To yank the stick down and really get the drive because you, you just can't get enough torque with the top hand alone to get that much pressure on. You got to get the whole thing into it. Beautiful. But I was going to say, I, you know, people ask me about you, and I'm like, no, Herbie knows more about some of these guys than I do. <laughs> you <laughs> seem to know everybody. Yeah, well, I, uh, I know a lot of people around the Haudenosaunee Confederacy when it comes to the game, right? Yeah. Not only the Confederacy, but the whole Lax world. Yeah. Here to BC, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, live, love, Lax, Stamper. Yeah. It's great to be back in the saddle again together. Yeah. Here's Drake Smith. Binghamton will try and tie it back up after that beautiful finish by Waylon Abrams. Oh, that one. Ricocheted off somebody. Jarvis gets it back. Corkscrew check attempt. Oh, and the big swing by Jimmy Chadwick. Now, at what point does that become a slasher? I think it's close, after, right? After the first one. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. So the second one would be here. Yeah. Just the yeah. One, for how wild it is. Yeah. Coming around, you don't know where it's going to land. Yeah. Here's Owen Hill. He made the pass to Abrams. Now he's going to shoot, and that one's going to go a little bit wide. You got numbers. They've got Ty Hill over this side. Can he get it to him? No, he's going to take it himself. That's a pretty good decision by James White because they're really playing the pass. Yeah. They took Ty Hill right out of the equation. Yeah. Great acceleration. The voice looking a little bit sore. And now we've got it turned over. Had Ball the, popped out into the bench. Had the Renegades bench door was closed, that wouldn't have been turned over. Yeah. Unfortunate. Masizic down low to Hill. Oh, what a hand save. Davy Jones throws it up. Oh, Outlet pass to Logan Monroe. He is all alone, and the bench is bouncing with excitement. Oh, beautiful finish. And the first guy out there to congratulate is Wes Whitlow, who's, who's the guy hopping in excitement on the bench. And Monroe, he's having himself quite a game. Look at this. He just places this one also. Oh, yeah. Look oh. at that. Oh, my. call that the pop can shot you know when we were kids at the box we'd uh pick up all the loose pop cans and put yep. them in the corners of the yep. net hang them on the, with the string yes sir yeah i call that the pop can shot and it looks like we're gonna take a little break we'll take our media timeout with 5 15 to go here in the third quarter and that goal by logan monroe has broken the back and forth tie and one goal game situation it's 14 to 12 i'm steven stamp with herbie john this is the pbl on lacrosse tv Welcome back to the Cross Friends. We are underway. Oh, we're kind of underway, except down at the other end. Was not noticed by some of the officials that Kobe Johnson is still getting some tape, uh, a bit of a tape job done on his hand. Just, uh, or is it tape, or is he just, they're just trying to get the... Maybe getting his sleeve tucked in. Maybe. Yeah, getting his sleeve. They're doing something with his hand. Oh, I wonder... Yeah, maybe he got hit on the hand. Yeah. And he don't have a backup goalie. That's true. Well, I think Danny Tavares, I, I do believe he was the driver, so he wanted to get the play going and right? get on the road. <laughs> Let's roll. Kobe Johnson says, eh, I'm all right, going back in. So it is 14 to 12 for the Elmira Renegades here in their home building at First Arena. And Kobe Johnson is still having some trouble with his hand and saying, now the trainer. trainer's coming out. Yeah, they're going to have to deal with this. And that is tricky without a uh, backup goaltender available for Binghamton. But Oh, uh, you know what? I think one of his fingers is uh, dislocated.
I've, I remember uh, playing basketball in a men's league, and uh, and somebody came over to me and said, you're a personal trainer, right? And I was at the time. I said, yeah. And they're like, oh, can you fix this? And the guy's finger was dislocated his head at the joint. And I'm like, I'm a trainer, not a doctor, but I'll give it a go. Just when we, somebody going to put on the gear? They do have Jake Lazor playing on the uh, floor. That's true. Jake Lazor wearing 16. So they do have another goaltender who's running. Jake Lazor, who actually played for the U.S. team at the 2019 World Championships. He was the third goalie, and they were short some guys who were coming back from, from uh, I think, PLL at that point. So he suited up, and he's actually pretty good. He's played in the President's Cup. Yep. He's a good runner. Yep. But he's also, of course, a good goaltender. Yep. I was very surprised to see him coming up here on my way up here. He stopped me in the tunnel there. <laughs> He said, hey, Herb, come coach us. And I said, oh, I'll be up here, you know. <laughs> I'm going to be busy. Kind of threw me off guard because he had uh, running, runner's gear on. Yeah. Well, might have to throw the attendee gear back on here if Kobe can't get it together. Yeah. So the score, 14 to 12. Once again, we will go over. There are four weekends of double headers for this Jim Thorpe Challenge and then a championship weekend. Um, everything's going to be out. I think that... I, I've got to double check on the, all the dates myself. St. Patrick's Day weekend, though, is the double elimination tournament yeah. with all seven teams here in Elmira for the most part. A couple of games Friday night because I believe there's a hockey game here in Elmira on the Friday. So two games in Onondaga is the plan on Friday, the 17th of March, and then the next two days, four games. That's a big day here in, uh, in Elmira. And, uh, and then three games in... Elmeyer here on the Sunday to uh, crown a champion of the uh, Jim Thorpe Challenge. I think J Jimmy Chadwick is just looking up to see if we're paying attention. We're watching, Jimmy. We're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy is quite a showman. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Very enthusiastic player. I'm excited. I'm glad that the uh, Onondaga Nation has opened up for it. Uh, yes. To come back to the nation. Yeah. Excited. I love the Onondaga Nation Arena. Yep. And, uh, and then, of course, there's the uh, field house. Yeah. One of the most beautiful lacrosse facilities in the world. For sure. And we're underway. Kobe Johnson is okay. He's got the gear back on. And here comes Cody Kilcoin after the faceoff. A couple of fakes by Matt Bennett. He's going to go back to Kilcoin. Austin Finger on him. And again, uh, now we've got Elmira leaving a player up the floor. It was Maloney. Shot clock running down, and here come the Renegades now. Chadwick has it, took the pass. He's going to shoot, saved by Kobe Johnson. Pops it down, and he's going to just let his teammates scoop that one up. Do you think Jimmy Chadwick was aiming for all oh, good, good oh transition my. by Drake? That is beautiful. Drake Smith showing some heads upness there. Is that a word, heads upness? I think it is. Why not? <laughs> I'm just going to let you do the replay here, bud. <laughs> no, it was, uh, it was a good head man there. Yeah. Drake Smith calling for it all the way. Uh, like I was saying, uh, it started with a shot and a save by Kobe Johnson, but it, the save happened on his right hand. Do you think they're shooting for his right hand? Yeah. Joe Aquilano, Aquilano who uh, he was listed as three, and he's wearing 13. So we've solved that mystery, as we told you we would. But Aquilano, who picked it up in the crease and got things rolling. And the thing, the pass coming to Drake Smith, that looks pretty simple. He's fairly open, but that pass, to get past a stick, it was low. It's like hip high. He had to adjust to that. And that is a great job with the pass coming through traffic to adjust and make the catch. And what a rip from the outside. That is Pierce Abrams, an absolute bomb to get the Bombers back into it. That was, that was made happen by Jordan Jarvis once again with a nice... Pick, seal, screen, boom. Good shot. Good shot, Pierce. Oh. Again, a ton of space. An absolute wide open time and space. Our face-off guys are back to the dot. We've brought, got Brian Conzola on the right for Binghamton against Austin Finger for Elmira. And Finger wins another one. That's a hold. Yep. Oh, that's really a hold. <laughs> Tyler's going to go. I wanted to see who called it first, and all three of them called it yeah. at the same time. It's a tie. <laughs> Sp 
Speaking of Ty, we're tied up again, 14-14. <laughs> yep. And Ty Hill is going to the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you like that one. Yeah. I'm happy. I like to make you enjoy yourself, <laughs> help you enjoy yourself. 3.43 to go in the third quarter. We are tied up, but going to the power play are the Elmira Renegades. Now, did they take the penalty shot this half? They yeah, did, right? I, I do believe so. Yeah. That's the one that was called yeah. back on uh, Waylon Abrams. That's right. Yep. That's right. Owen Hill at the top as they go strong left. Over to Voigt. There's Abrams down at the goal line. Nice save. Just pinning the ball between his body and arm and looking for the outlet. There's D-Rock. He's got him, Hops with the ball, oh. off the post. What a play by Kobe Johnson. He knew that Hops was gone. Yep. Andrew Davey fights through the double team and comes away with it, spins away. Boy, he's like a water bug out there. And then gets it off to Aquilina. Minute 21 remaining and a penalty to Tyler Hill. Lobbed out to Masizek. Yeah, we talked earlier about Binghamton being pretty passive on the penalty kill D. Now Elmira really letting Binghamton have all the time. Aquilina's shot is wide. It is. So the 30 will expire, but that's a good 30 killed by the Bombers. Ty Hill's up and ready to go. There's a minute left in his penalty. Nick Miller has it. Boy, really... Uh, <laughs> casual pass to Miller and it didn't get there. They do get it back. They've still got 12 to shoot. Hill with a big pick from Voigt. Aquilina fights through it. Good passing. They're just not connecting. Oh, oh that's a hard shot from Miller trying to beat the 30. Instead, he beat a little hole into the or dent into the boards at the back of the rink. Ball all the way down to the other end of the floor and with 17 left on the penalty to Hill. Binghamton can kill it. This is quite a rivalry between these two clubs. Being just uh, basically forming a triangle with Syracuse. They're both south, one southeast, one southwest of Syracuse. Kilcoin going to the net. We're back to even strength and Hill's gonna come in. He's always oh, he steps in the crease. If he'd managed to stay out, Hill was kind of slipping in. Not sure if they saw him coming. Doesn't matter though, as Brody LeBourne is going to draw a penalty. Kilcoin with the swinging check that we talked about earlier, and they're going to call him on that one. Here's Waylon Abrams. Lobs it across. Six attackers behind nice. the back. Oh my! Wes Whitlow, the gorgeous pass and the sweeping one timer. What a play by Stephen Portelli. That's gorgeous. Two options right behind him. Wow. I like I like watching West Way Low. He's very crafty. He yeah. knows where his players are. Like I said, right there, he had two options behind him. Yeah. Oh. And for uh, to take that pass by Portelli, the low pass, and just sweep it in. That's that was a thing of beauty. Wes Whitlow does a lot of things out on the lacrosse floor. Of course, his cousin Kyle also playing PBLA this year. And not sure if he's still doing PBL. I'm trying to remember which team Kyle was with. It's a low shot by Hobbs. He tries to get his rebound. He steps in the crease. So nice job avoiding the back in there by Monroe as Drake Smith is all over him on the four check. They're going to run out of time on the eight second count. Yeah. So that'll be Binghamton with the four check getting possession. You have eight seconds to get across center. They were nowhere near it as there was still a goal line extended. Now the clock hasn't been reset. There we get the 30. So they actually get a pretty long 30 here. They're not going to need it as they get the pass in low to McNabb, but he just misses. Nice one hand catch by Owen Hill. He's got Jarvis on him. Kobe Johnson made that one look pretty easy. Like he knew exactly where it was going. Oh, there's a non-penalty with that big swing. I guess it was just the plastic on plastic was loud. Drake Smith tries behind the back. Look at a pretty big swing to me too. Masizic goes low in the veteran. He talked before the season about how he was really having fun being back in the box and back playing lacrosse, and he is going to enjoy that one. 
Yeah, another guy good to see out there again, RPM, Ryan Paul Masizic, we used to call him back in our Newtown days. He came out, uh, played Can-Am with us. Golden Eagles. Yes. Yeah, yeah. love that group. Can-Am's a fun league. Yeah. A lot of teams, very competitive. I mean, Newtown, obviously the Onondaga Red Hawks. And, uh, <clears throat> were the, was, did Aquasauce have a team in that league? Or? Were they in the? Uh, they did, right? Yeah, they they yeah. won the Can Am, the Bucks. Yeah, the Bucks, uh, two yeah. year, two years in a row. Yeah, um, I do believe they yeah, uh, got to the Presidents Cup Finals. Yep. Here's a two on one. Chadwick's going to just set a pick, and Miller didn't really use it, but he had no choice as the quarter was about to end, so he had to get the shot off. It doesn't quite connect. So we were tied six six after fifteen minutes. We were tied eleven eleven at the half, and after three quarters, we are tied 15-15. We know the last 15 minutes is gonna be exciting. Stick with us here on Lacrosse TV for PBL Action. I'm Steven Stamp with Herbie John. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Welcome back, Lacrosse friends, to PBL Action on Lacrosse TV. We're just about ready to go with the fourth quarter. It is 15-15. We've been tied from at the start after 15 minutes, after 30 minutes, and after 45 minutes. And we had quite an eventful quarter break as Kobe Johnson, who we saw earlier getting some attention on his hand, went to the bench, started stripping down Jake Lazor, who is a goaltender, who's played. Uh, he was he was standing there. We thought there might be a change happening on the bench as Kobe was stripping his gear off. We thought he, Jake might, be, might just be putting his on. But the trainer came, gave Kobe some uh, attention to the hand area, the hand and wrist, and he is back out. And it's the, uh, it's the stick hand, so... We'll see how it works. Portelli has the ball now as Elmira will try to regain the lead once again. It has been back and forth. That's a nice pass to Waylon Abrams. He'll find Whitlow. Whitlow loading up. Big screen from Owen Hill. Owen Hill tries to grab the bounce off the boards with one hand, but it gets away, and it is a 30-second violation. Almost an over Mac. Nice job by McNabb to just jump across. What a great pass. Oh, it gets away from Drake Smith. That was lovely by Jordan Jarvis, who has never lacked for skill and made a beautiful lead pass that almost connected for a good chance. Josh Harris reached the stick out to make sure he got over center in eight seconds and gives it to Jimmy Chadwick, who knocks it down to the turf, has to pick it back up. He's got Bennett all over him. Matt Bennett, a very talented young player. Here's a shot from Maloney. Outlet pass, and oh, he didn't know. <laughs> Pierce Abrams didn't know where that one was coming. I think uh, Smith tried to just kind of lead him with that one on the bounce pass, but Abrams looked over the wrong shoulder. Oh, oh, that was a late call. RPM just laid Nick Miller right out, not looking. Oh, Jimmy Chadwick. That's Jimmy Chadwick went yeah. down. I think we're going to have a penalty come, penalty shot come. Have they not? Yep. Yeah, they haven't used theirs here in the second half yet. So, <laughs> yeah, Brian Hobart pretty much immediately did the uh, did the signal. And Binghamton, they had their penalty killers out. They realized what's going on, so they're heading on. <laughs> and Matt Bennett went into the goalie stance and gave a little a little up and down with the hands to Owen Hill. Owen Hill will go down on the real goaltender, Kobe Johnson. Kobe steps slightly off his line. Hill, fake, 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 fake. Oh, nice save. Hill decided to go five hole. Big, rueful smile from Owen Hill. He knows he was just beaten in a great matchup with Kobe Johnson. Thirteen twenty-eight remaining here in the fourth quarter. 15-15. That penalty shot wiped out. We're going to go back five on five. Yeah, Face no, no power it. play. What a game. Yeah. This has been a beauty. We will have the draw once again. Konzola and Finger. Finger, who has been really having a night at the faceoff dot, comes away with it. And he's going to shoot. Nice stop by Johnson. Yeah, Scooped close. up there by Aquilina. There's Andrew Davey. Oh, that's going to be over and back. James White couldn't quite get there. He's got it. Puts it down. Brody the Bourne. He's got a man coming off the bench. 
Nice job by Jake McNabb to hustle back because because Bradley Voigt was trying to cut to the back door and McNabb just took away that opportunity. Portelli gives it up. Miller moves it on. Here's Portelli. Oh. That pass just kind of got knocked up in the air. Behind the back pass from Waylon Abrams is still rolling out towards center. Scooped up there by Kilcoin. Oh, Wait, nice man. pass to Smith. Drake Smith. Great trail check by Nick Miller. Oh, and then rams Smith into the boards. And Smith can't believe there's no call in it. I don't agree with him on that one. Smith is still down. Yeah. He might just stay up there. No, he's going to go to the bench. I was going to say he might just stay up and look for an outlet pass. But he actually went in the wrong door, and they're not going to call it. Don't really blame him on that one. He was pretty shaken up yeah. going into the boards. Here's Luca Maloney. Oh, fights through the check. It was perilously close to a hold for Jordan Jarvis, but just battles it off. And Maloney on his offside goes to the far post. Again, kept his feet moving and his hands, hands free. Over the shoulder of Kobe Johnson. That's a great shot. Luke Maloney, not the biggest guy, but got the stick way up over his head because he saw that spot over the far shoulder. <laughs> I like this PA announcer. <laughs> he gets fired up. Yeah. Let's just take a look at the uh, Elmira bench. It looks like Jimmy Chadwick is back in line to come on the floor. I don't think we've seen him since he was knocked down and seemed a little shaken up, but he is in line, ready to take his next shift. Nice. There's a nice pass, but just missing with Carson Reese. It's grabbed there by Jake Lazor, who will make the lob pass ahead. Pretty nice touch pass, and Aquilina into the offensive zone. He's gonna go for a change. Here's Pierce Abrams. Gets underneath Miller, but Miller recovers pretty nicely. He gets a couple of big whacks. Ooh. Hard rip from Jarvis. Harris will come away with a loose ball off the rebound. Got some pressure, but very calmly flips it out to Miller. Gets it ahead to Chadwick, there he is. He's got Voigt with him. Oh, great stop by Tyler Hill as Chadwick read the uh, the oh. break perfectly, but now he's got it, dunk it tip. Oh. Is it? Yeah. It's good. He got some air on that. He effort. did. Holy cow. Wow. And, and the Elmira bumped. fans love him. Yeah. Yeah, he's bumped. <laughs> yeah. The enthusiasm is great. Look at this. Oh, yeah. I just wonder if it got in in time because it looked like it pinged off the post. Right. This is going to be a good angle. Yeah, it was. That was a great goal. He was just so high. Yeah. <laughs> he had time to come down. I've never jumped that high in my life without a trampoline. <laughs> What a goal by Jimmy Chadwick to extend the lead to two at 17-15. Yeah, the fans like him. Yeah. His enthusiasm is infectious. There are times when he needs to, you know, rein things in a little. Yeah. <laughs> but boy, can he play. And look at that, that athleticism to get up there. Like, holy cow. That was Josh Byrne-esque. Oh, good answer. Wow, Jake McNabb. Yeah. The step back off the back foot, and that is, oh, I wish we had a radar gun on that one to see how fast it was going, because it was moving. Seven for McNabb. Where's it eight now? Uh, seven. Seven for Jake McNabb. Nice little pass from Drake Smith. What a combo those two are. Said, I really enjoy in this game the way the ball is moving around conservatively and somebody's always open somebody's getting their help on the backside and that's why we're in a 17-16 game Stemper yeah Coley's probably not enjoying it a whole lot Ryan Lewis was open for at least <laughs> three seconds there he was looking for it again but Voigt takes the rip and it's picked up by Monroe 
Having a strong game. There's the long outlet pass. Oh, it's not close though to Waylon Abrams. Nice idea, but could not get it where he wanted it. And here is the pickup on the loose ball. Killcoin on the run. It's two on three. But he's got the man on the far side. Ooh, good call there. Yep, illegal pick. Yeah. Yeah. Jordan Jarvis was just coming in hot. He didn't even set. The man they call RPM, Ryan Misizek, on the far side was coming in for the backdoor attempt, but he's got a little zesty on the pick game. And how Portelli directing traffic. Nice job by Ty Hill to pick up Owen Hill. Unrelated those two, I'm like 98% sure. Oh! oh! Wow, that was good goal. Wow, Stephen Portelli, the little underhand sweep shot to the far post. And oh my, Herbie, this is a beauty. Yes. Where he placed it, just far side. Oh, oh. yeah. Kobe Pipe thought he in. was going near side. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. I call that the red zone. I, I when I see my Pee Wee's taking that shot right there, yeah. I said no more red zone shots. But well, coach, we can make that shot. Well, I guess you can, right? And you're in the big leagues. <laughs> I remember seeing uh, Caleb Wiles take a shot. When he was playing in Sealax, uh, the precursor to the Arena League. The, uh, yeah. And, uh, oh, hang on for a second. Here's another chance. Oh, that one stopped off of Whitlow, and the ball pops loose. But he took a shot from along the goal line, extended way out, and he scored. And the team's celebrating, and his coach, it was with, um, oh, I don't think it was, it was, wasn't was Barry in that league. It was uh, Oshawa, maybe. The uh, Durham Turf Dogs, I think. He was playing. I don't know. Anyway, his coach was Brad MacArthur, and I talked to MacArthur after the game, and he said, yeah, I told the guys, anybody else takes that shot, you're sitting right here beside me. Because <laughs> that's a shot Caleb Wiles can take, yeah. and he can put it in. Caleb Wiles, who actually played in the PBLA with the uh, Trenton Terror. Boy, he is Under still. Under Luke, right? Yeah, Luke yeah. was the head coach. Yep. Luke, a former NLL All-Star. Caleb had a cup of coffee in the in the top pro league, and uh, of the time and oh oh nice save Kobe Johnson on the attempt oh no got a slashing call as Portelli goes down Matthew Bennett was trying to leak early yeah. and gave Portelli a shot and got free and Clint Doolittle seen it and not gonna have it not gonna have it Caleb Wiles one of the most talented skilled players I've ever seen yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. wow he's something yeah. So we'll have a power play. I'm anxious to see Luke. You know, I haven't seen Luke in a while. Oh, it's been um, a bit, yeah. He's down in the Philly area, Trenton yeah. area. And ton of work going into the game. He's giving back coaching, yep. running programs. Yep. Let's go, Let's go, Owen Hill with it. Hops on him, a little pick from That's Harris. Good. That's good to see him. Behind the back, yep. <clears throat> Sorry, that was Abrams, Waylon Abrams. Again, Brian Hobart talked about Abrams and Hill and their chemistry. You can see it there. Hard rip, another save by Johnson, but a fresh 30 as Voigt picks it up. They stay strong left here as Hill's at the top. And you can see the Binghamton penalty killers are just taking every chance they can to rest. It's late in the game, a short bench. Oh, nice shoulder save. Comes back to Willie Abrams, another save. Another save, Kobe Johnson. Kobe Johnson heating up. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> Give Waylon Abrams that space. Let him absolutely rip a sidearm. And Kobe Johnson's only human. Yeah, yeah Ryan Masizek and Joe Aquilina standing there and uncontested, take a shot. Another good outside shot by Waylon Abrams. Much needed water break for Kobe Johnson right now. He yeah. was on fire there for at least two minutes, at least three 30 second shot clocks there. Yeah. We are going to take the media time out here with 7.17 to go in the fourth. The Renegades have pulled ahead 19 to 6 in this PBL action on Lacrosse TV. I'm Stephen Stamp with Herbie John, and we'll be back for the final seven minutes plus of this fabulous game. Welcome back, lacrosse friends, to PBL action. PBL action on Lacrosse TV. Austin Finger loses the draw, but fights to get it back from Gonzola. And Finger is just a possession magnet for the Renegades. Today. I'm Stephen Stamp with Herbie John. It's 1916 Renegades, but every time someone's got ahead, the other team has come back. We'll see if Binghamton can do it again. Again, they're a little short on the bench. 
Jimmy Chadwick fighting to try and get that ball, but some hard work from Ryan Lewis. And he'll set it up and then they're just gonna muck the final few seconds as the, the 30 is running down for the Renegades. Smart play by Jake Lazor yep. just to keep the ball on the floor there. Lewis with the pass out, finds Consola and Binghamton will come up into the offensive zone. He's gonna look for some help there and gets it to Jarvis. Again, good to see Jordan Jarvis on the floor. I haven't seen him play for a while. Sidearm rip, nice pass. Behind the back from McNabb. But Davy Jones was ready. This guy McNabb's really got me on the edge of my chair, Stan. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've never really seen this guy play. Fire it. Oh, oh that's a rocket from, from Jarvis. And Davy Jones is going to need a moment Davey after that one. After that one. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. He doesn't feel good. Oh, Davy, I hope he's okay. Jarvis just took every step he could possibly take to walk it in. And yeah. it's not even a really hard windup. It's just his natural shot. Yeah. You play catch with him, and that ball's coming at you, 90. Yeah. Davy Jones, another gentle giant. You can see he is shaken up. Another, just a tremendous young man. Brody the Bourne has brought some water out. So it's 1916. We've got 6.05 to play in this uh, second game of the Jim Thorpe Challenge. So just again to explain the, uh, as you know, we all know the PBLA started earlier this year. Um, unfortunately had to cease operations after uh, about five weeks and a lot of work by the players and the coaches from the league along with Mammoth Sports and Entertainment to, uh, to make this happen. So we've got a couple of tournaments basically going, a running tournament over the course of five weekends, the Jim Thorpe Challenge. That's the four teams from this area, three, the, these two, Binghamton and Elmira, the third part of the Triangle, Syracuse and Jim Thorpe, all Americans who are based kind of out of Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, but they've been a bit of a barnstorming team. So those four are playing in this Jim Thorpe Challenge uh, around Robin Plus a bit, and then they'll have a championship weekend. And then the other part of the, the PBL now, the Players Box Lacrosse, is the Players Invitational Weekend, which will be here in Elmira for the most part, a couple of games in Onondaga, which has seven of the nine PBLA teams taking part. And, uh, you know, good on the... Uh, some of the original founders who, who you know have the PBLA rights to let the teams play with their jerseys and with their uh, you know with their branding so they can keep things rolling and a lot of effort I know by Mammoth Sports and Entertainment the players and coaches to make it all happen it's pretty exciting to have them back on the floor and what an exciting game this is we had a nice game earlier that you were refing yeah. so you got we're up close and personal it's pretty yeah. quick yeah it was you know again it was really fun to be back out on the floor again and you know as a ref you you know, you have just as much fun as the players on the floor, right? Because you're in the game also. Nice diving oh. attempt by Voight, but Davy Jones just gets big. After being shaken up, he was ready and alert and makes the lovely save. Here comes Justin McKinney on the run. Little pick from Portelli. Not much going. They're just going to pop it back up to Whitlow and slow things down a little. <laughs> Elmira with the three-goal lead and five-and-a-half to play. Don't mind getting deep into the 30. Obviously, they're going to take oh. chances when they get him. Almost hit Waylon Abrams on the back door. That shot is blocked. I think it actually hit Abrams, and he's just run out of steam. He collapses onto the turf for a bit. He'll get back to the bench. I think he was trying to draw something there. <laughs> Maybe. Pierce Abrams. Nice one-hand, underhand shovel pass. Behind the back. That's a beauty from Kilcoin, but it was stopped by Davy Jones. And Elmira's got it. Austin Finger. Not really an offensive guy, so he's going to slow it down a little bit. He can go up and play some. He will join in on this set. Just waits for everybody to join him. And gets it over to Jimmy Chadwick. Wide open lane wow. to the net. No, they're going to say crease violation. And Nick Miller hates it. He says, that's the goal of my life. How are you calling that off? And they, oh, they're going to send him to the box. He looked right at Clint Doolittle, said something. Yeah. Doolittle didn't like it. Yeah. Have a seat. I mean, if he had just turned around and got back and accepted the call, well, we would have been playing on. Well, of course we would. What else would happen? <laughs> <laughs> he spoke like a true ref. Yeah. He was fired up. He was excited. Yeah. It was a great goal for him, and he doesn't think he stepped in the crease. Now, the funny thing is, he probably has no idea where his feet were. Right. I mean, as the player, the ref has a way better view. Yeah. 
The other thing I'll tell you is that we have a great view up here, and I really appreciate it. I spent the first half of the earlier game in the penalty box today because I love to get down at floor level sometimes. And uh, it really gives you a different perspective. And I'll tell you, as much as we pick on the wraps and things sometimes, great shot, Drake Smith. We'll get back to it. As that's a dead overhand, beautiful finish by Drake Smith for the power play goal. Just 18 seconds into the man advantage. That was a good seal by Matthew Bennett there. Freed up Drake Smith for that goal. PA announcer just getting to the penalty announcement. That's how quick that power play goal was. But I was going to say, you know, I spent the half in the in the penalty box, and I like that. You really get a feel for the speed, and you're reminded of how contested, how contentious everything is down on the floors they're fighting for it. But also up here, there's a lot of times we have a better view of things. Yeah. Hard rip by finger. But, uh, you know, you have players in the way when you're refing. You have players in the way. You have, th you know, angles and things. So it's... Uh, we don't mean to be unfair to the refs when we notice things and call them out. Yeah. For the most part. We try to be nice. You know, it really helps having a three-man crew. I, I really enjoy working uh, three-man. Yeah. You know, versus in the summertime, we're all used to just two-man. Right. It just gives you a lot more coverage of the floor with the three of you. Rip from the outside by Pierce Abrams. Goes wide. Didn't touch anybody. It's going to be an over and back. And as he picks it up, the call will be made, play blown down. Here comes Wes Whitlow. <laughs> Look for Elmira just to play clock management maybe right now. I don't know. I think oh, <laughs> maybe not. I'm say, you know, Waylon Abrams looked like he was ready to shoot from the yeah. get-go. Yeah, he came off the bench. There is something about scoring a goal, especially a pretty goal, and you can see how much Waylon Abrams yeah. enjoyed that one. Yeah. Oh. Shot around the screen. Look at that. Nice little pick by Owen Hill, and then he kind of slips off it. Again, that's that chemistry. Yeah. Waylon Abrams and Owen Hill. Yeah, good sense of what each other are going to do. And the Renegades really taking control. Probably not a huge surprise late in this game. As we mentioned, Binghamton a little shy on, on the bench this weekend. It was a fairly quick notice once. So much work put in by the players, the coaches, the Mammoth Sports Entertainment to make this happen. But, you know, there are so many factors, so many moving pieces to get it rolling that it wound up this first weekend. Maybe a little short notice for some of the guys to, to get everything pulled together. But uh, this things are just going to get better and better. This is an exciting game. Yeah. And uh, we hit a great game, the first one. Next weekend, we're back here on Friday, actually, with the doubleheader. Oh, what a low uh, rep from Jake McNabb. What's that, eight? You're writing them sure down. Is. That's why I keep yep, asking you. Yep, sure wow. Is. If you get three more, you're going to have to take one of your shoes off. <laughs> <laughs> nice dish by Jordan Jarvis. See, Jordan Jarvis, he might as well stay on the floor all season, right? Right? Do it. <laughs> Jordan, you're not a coach yet. You're still a player. <laughs> <laughs> coach on the floor. How's there you that? Go. Yep. 2018. It's a tight game still. Gonzola fighting for it, but Austin Finger. My goodness. Oh, yeah. he took a bit of a wrap swing there. Probably from, felt that last one. Yeah, I think so. Look okay, at Whalen coming off hard. Oh, they were going to hit him. Yeah, I don't know that Whitlow even saw him. He was kind of. Cutting with his back to him. Maloney tries to get the dish. Nice defense. Oh, but it popped back to Whitlow. That's a save by Kobe Johnson. Actually, he hits John Simic. The ref, he had no idea where it was. He gets his fuchsia, jer fuchsia and white jersey out of the way. And play continues. Here comes Voigt. He's going to get a pick from Andrew Davey. That's a good pick, but a nice save. Davey Jones and then reaches out to get it. Oh, it's blocked on the pass. And that's going to be a turnover. Great four-check pressure there. I think, was that James White that got a stick on that? Yep. Yeah. Under two minutes to go, it's a two-goal lead, and Kobe Johnson has ambled over to the Binghamton bench. Behind the back pass, may have been a bit of a force by Jordan Jarvis. Now they're going to make Kobe run. Uh, is he going back? He's, no, he's not going to get back there. It's going to be an empty netter for Nick Miller. That's a tough one for the Bombers to give up, but you know, that's the risk you take. Yeah. 
you know, you don't take nothing away from the Bombers. They, 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 they really pushed this game. Yeah. And they had their chances. Kobe yeah. Johnson has been on top of his game. I mean, this is the first game I've seen live all, all season. And I like what I see out of Kobe Johnson. Yeah. Also, Davy Jones. Also, like I said, 21-18. Yeah. That's yeah. a goalie's game. It's a high-scoring <laughs> game, yeah. but it doesn't take away what's really happening out there. Yeah, I mean, it's like a sixes score. Yeah. It's, you know, these teams are just running. And yeah. Lots of great finishing. I'm sure both coaches, coaching staffs are going to want to tighten up things defensively as we move forward. But, again, we did mention a little bit of rust after a few weeks off for these guys. There's another chance. Oh, that's a beautiful finish. Nice pass for Portelli across. And the finish from Justin McKinney. That'll just about do it. The falling, kind of a leaning tower of Pisa play by McKinney as the touch pass from Portelli. And as he goes, trying to make sure the feet stay out of the crease, achieves it and tucks it home. And that is probably the death knell for Binghamton's comeback hopes. Especially since, oh, actually it's what I was gonna say with Austin Finger taking the face off, but it was Wes Whitlow that time. And then Matthew Bennett zips in to take it. Greg Smith work. back to him, yeah, nice movement. McNabb, oh, that, oh, it's saved by Owen Hill. It caught past Davy Jones, and now Owen Hill is motioning up the floor. Nobody was up there, so he'll make the short pass. Here's Jimmy Chadwick. We're in the four, final 45 seconds. Next Friday is the next doubleheader as part of this Jim Thorpe Challenge. Check out the social media for the, uh, and we will have it. I'll, uh, we'll try and share it. Make sure we know all, but next Friday. Next Friday, Binghamton versus Jim Thorpe's at 5 p.m. There you go. first game. And then the second game would be Elmira against Syracuse Spark. Yes. Yeah, that's the 8 o'clock game. We know we're going to have the 8 o'clock game on Lacrosse TV. I'm not sure about the 5 o'clock yet. A few details still being sorted out, but there's a pass ahead. It's tipped by Waylon Abrams. Kobe Johnson will just stand there, and they're not going to call him four seconds in the crease. They're just going to let the final few seconds Zor tick away. <laughs> Jake Lazor wanted the goal from the crease. What an exciting game, 22-18. Yeah. Both teams, as we said, things to work on, things to tweak, but it's great to have PBL action going here on Lacrosse TV. I'm Stephen Stan with Herbie John, and Herbie, that was fun. Yeah, for sure. I can't wait till next week. Uh, two, uh, two really good games coming up again. I mean, for the next month and a half, maybe two more months of this PBL. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Great to have you in the yeah, booth. Yeah, I appreciate really appreciate it. you refing and then coming up to uh, to call it. It's so much fun to be on the mic with you again. And, yeah. And uh, can't wait to do some more. Stay with us on Lacrosse TV for PBL, PBL action through, as you said, the next several weeks. I'm Stephen Stamp with Herbie John. Thanks for being with us. We will see you next time.